Hello, and welcome back to Diecast Graveyard. My name is Paul. We've got a pretty cool build today. We're going to take this 55 Chevy panel van, and we're going to do some cutouts on the roof, some really cool flame cutouts. But what's really cool about this casting is that the back end opens up, and inside there's this little motorcycle that slides out. You're going to be able to see the motorcycle inside the panel van once those flames are cut out. And then we're going to do a pretty custom cool paint job and go through that step by step. And we're going to have a lot of fun with this casting. So if you get your chance, go ahead and grab your favorite adult beverage. Sit back and relax as we transform this Hot Wheels 55 Chevy panel van into a really cool panel van with a cool custom paint job. Let's go ahead and get started. I've already got the post drilled out. Now this particular casting only has one post. The rear of the vehicle is held on with a little clip that clips onto the body. I started experimenting with some flames and how I wanted to do it, etc. So I was sketching around with a permanent marker on that. Here's the back door. That's actually held in place with the interior. We'll have to take off the glass. Here's the base. Those, t those tires are really cool, so we're going to leave those alone. Here's the interior with the motorcycle that slides out. We're actually going to hand paint that motorcycle, so that's going to look pretty cool also. Just a little bit of pushing and that thing will come right out. But that'll be neat. And here's the windshield for inside. I've got another one of these vehicles where I might switch out the interior and the windshield because I'm not really crazy about these yellow ones, but who knows, the paint job I do might work out well with it. Let's go ahead and continue. Here we're going to use the saw, the jeweler saw, and we're going to go ahead and cut out these flames. Now, in the areas that I'm going to cut out, I drilled a small starter hole to go ahead and put the blades in. I sped this up a little bit because it's kind of boring, but I am going to have a video here where I'm going to explain to you how to use the jeweler's saw and how I have found out certain things to do and to not do. But this is going to be really cool. And guys, I've got these jeweler's saws on my Amazon Marketplace page. They're less than $20 and they still come out with a, a lot of blades and the different size blades. Now, I'm, like I said, when I do this video, I'm going to explain to you the different kind of blades, the different sizes, etc., etc. But the only way you're going to get good at this is to practice. And this is another way that, that I'd like you to go ahead and step up your modified Hot Wheels game, let's say. I got one of these little holders here that you clamp onto your desk and this gives you a little hollow place where you can use your saw. But you will break a lot of blades, I promise. Trust me on this one, okay? But once you get the work done and it turns out the way you want, man, does it look cool. Look at that. Like I say, you got the little starter holes there. And you just go through and clean them up. And then you get in there with a file as best as you can and clean it up. Now look how cool that looks. That looks excellent. Make sure you do all your cutting. You know, you can go ahead and strip the paint first. Or you can strip it afterwards. I chose to strip it after. But this is how I wanted to do it. Go ahead and uh, use whatever your paint stripper you're using like I got here citrus strip or as I call it embalming fluid shake off the excess I'll put it on this tray and then I'll go ahead and let it rest don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click on that little bell to be alerted to any future videos that come out here goes the back door and we did remove the plastic glass in the back because this paint stripper will definitely melt it All right, let's set that there on the tray, and we'll get back to it in a few. Someone 
is being exhumed. <laughs> Here we've got the body. Now all we had to do was sand it down just to smooth it out. We're going to use this Tamiya surface primer and we're going to give it a nice coat of primer to be able to hold on to that Createx paint. And that Createx paint came from Spraygunner.com. That looks really nice. Now I held the door in the back in place with a piece of tape. You can use a little tiny bit of super glue or something up around that hinge to hold it in place, which I do later on. But sometimes just holding it in place with the tape there is just as good. Let's go ahead and continue on with the custom painting. Here I've got some Createx paint. I've got Sparkalescent Mango. Now I love this paint. I love the Sparkalescent paints and I've got many different colors and flavors. All right. Here we're going to use 4030 Balancing Clear and 4013 Reducer. Now the paint, you put in as much paint as you want to. And you only need a little bit because you're only painting a small car. Now the balancer, and then I'll use this mixer to go ahead and mix it up. Now the 4030 Balancing Clear and the reducer is only used at a 10% ratio. And you're just going to eyeball that. All right. Unless you really want to get specific, you only need to eyeball it. Use that little stir that I got there. It's a Badger stir, and those are available on my Amazon Marketplace page. What's really cool about this is when you're done with the cutout, you're going to be able to see the motorcycle on the inside. This is another vehicle that I had also. Hey, the motorcycle came out. But we're going to paint up the motorcycle on the inside of the panel van also, and that's going to look absolutely excellent. I've always wanted to do this vehicle like this and because of the motorcycle on the inside and going to be able to see on the inside, the cutting out of the roof only comes down to your imagination folks. Here we've got the entire car painted with Sparkalescent Mango and those Createx paints are fantastic. We painted the door in the back also as you can see here. That looks pretty awesome. You need to let these paints sit a minimum of 30 minutes before you tape over them in order to put on any other colors okay so make sure that you get on the inside of the doors because if you open up the doors you want to make sure that you see the color and not just bare metal on the inside let's go ahead and move on here we're going to tape it up and i'm going to use a pearl black now this pearl black has kind of like a metallic shine to it i use the pinstripe tape and then I use the blue painter's tape over the top of the pinstripe tape to help seal off the car. Now one of the other things you're going to have to do is you're going to have to seal the inside of the van so the paint doesn't spray and go up into the other color that you had. Now here's a perfect example right here. Here I've got this police car and I had black and I had white. Well when I sprayed the black I didn't want the black coming up through the window underneath and contaminating the white there that I already had. So what you're going to need to do is take some tape and put it on the inside and cover up the windows. So the second color that you're spraying or the darker color doesn't contaminate the other color. Now here's today's tip from your Uncle Polly. Okay? Protect that other color by covering up any openings that may be in there such as window openings, windshields, uh, back windows, etc. Or if you happen to have cutouts like you see here. Okay, this is looking pretty good. I decided to try and color the flames a little bit just to give it a little bit more accent to those flames. And I'm, I'm liking what I see, but man, I tell you, I don't, I'm just not falling in love with it. Now here's the car, and I put on some... Uh, iridescent sparkle on it too and took it outside the sun really brightens it up but you know gosh i just wasn't sold on the paint job so guess what i decided to go back to the drawing board and start from scratch the paint job just wasn't talking to me now i've done that from time to time and i know that you will too 
So the first color we're going to use here is this Wicked Laguna Blue. I put in the 4030 Balancing Clear and I put in the 4013 Reducer also at a 10% ratio. Maybe a little bit less reducer. Now if you happen to have a brush that's got a 0.5 needle, then the proper mixing ratio should be fine. If you happen to be using something smaller, like a 0.3 or whatever, you're going to have to thin it down more, but you're going to have to experiment and see what works for you and your airbrush. Okay, we got the top end painted up. We got the bottom that we're going to paint in a darker blue. So I'm going to use this fluorescent blue, and I'm going to tone it down or make it a little bit darker with this candy pigment blue that I have just to get it darker. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to spray it. There you go with the darker blue. So now I've got two different kinds of blue here. That's looking really good. Again, by using these water-based colors, they dry quickly, but you still want to let them set for at least 30 minutes to dry and harden, but the longer, the better. Now we're taping off the top portion, or the bottom portion, excuse me, and we're gonna go again with the pearl black and paint the entire top of the vehicle pearl black so let's go ahead and do this and we'll see what we come up with and here's the result of the paint job after we painted the pearl black and took off the tape I'm really loving this now it's time to paint the motorcycle let's go ahead and get in there with some testers paint and do the best you can to paint everything the way you want to. Now we'll go paint the tires, we'll paint those black of course. We'll get in, we'll paint the tanks of the motorcycle, the seat, the front tires, maybe the hand grips, etc. Here I've sped things up a little bit just to keep things flowing. These little details that you do on your cars or on little accessories like the interior and like that these are the things that are going to make your custom pop. Now, again, taking your time and practicing, if you make a mistake, clean it off with lacquer thinner and do it again. That's all you can do. Now, of course, if you're using water-based paints like the Createx paints, the Chroma Air paints, those clean off with regular airbrush cleaner or water from your supplier like SprayGunner.com and like that. But make sure that you don't Mix the lacquer thinner with water-based paints and the water-based cleaner with lacquer or solvent type paints. Meanwhile, back in the graveyard. Okay, we got all of our pieces. We got the body here, and man, I'll tell you, I absolutely love how this turned out. We detailed it up. That's pretty cool. And you got that roof all cut out, then you'll be allowed to see that motorcycle on the inside. Here's the base with those fantastic real rider tires. Here's the interior. Here's the glass. That looks fantastic. Here's the back door that matches up with the paint job. And here's the hand painted motorcycle. Let's go ahead and put everything together and have our reveal. And this is what we started with this 55 Chevy panel van with the door in the back that opens up and inside is a motorcycle that can slide out. This in itself is a fantastic vehicle and it was a lot of fun to work with. We went in and we cut some flames out of the roof. Guys, take your time practicing drawing flames and like that and make sure that you're happy with the way they look. You can find examples if you do a Google search, etc., on flames, uh, vector, vector type images, etc. But take your time, draw them by hand until you're happy with it. And you'll have a lot of fun with this. Get yourself a jeweler saw from my Amazon Marketplace page and practice with it. It's going to be a lot of fun, I promise. And it's going to open up a ton of new doors. We took everything apart. We stripped down the paint. We gave it a custom paint job and a second custom paint job. And folks, this is how it turned out. Man, I absolutely love the way this turned out. The flames in the, in the top of the roof that were cut out, you can see inside the vehicle and see the motorcycle. 
the paint job on the outside I did a little bit of searching on the internet and I found one I liked and I copied it up and this is how it turned out we got the the dark blue on the bottom we got the thin the lighter blue pinstripe going around the design and we got that metallic pearl black on the top we gave it some really nice clear coat from the Redline shop that looks fantastic but all the other paints are water-based paints from Createx that we got from SprayGunner.com. And like I said, folks, you guys can do this. I know you can. Follow the videos that I put out. I've got a lot of friends that got other videos. Follow their channels. Look at the detail on this. So much fun. It's so rewarding when you do something like this. And it turns out really sweet and sharp. Really, really sweet. Check out the folks at SprayGunner.com. They've got a complete line of airbrushes for all your airbrush needs. They've got a really cool line of compressors to include their wonderful no-name compressors. They've got airbrush paints from Createx, which is an incredibly great brand. They've got their in-house brand called Chroma Air. I love these paints. Airbrush kits from Grex and No Name and many other manufacturers. Spend less, get more at SprayGunner.com. And don't forget about the great products of Flitz. If you go to their website at www.flitz.com, for those folks watching diecast graveyard videos, the folks at Flitz have got a special offer for you. If you go to their website, any product online, Flitz will offer you 20% off any product off their website. At the end of the transaction, type in the code GRAVEYARD. Now this deal is for anyone who watches Diecast Graveyard's videos, but you have to go to the Flitz website in order to get this special deal. Thank you to the great folks at Flitz. Thank you for joining me in Diecast Graveyard. I had a great time with this vehicle. Now I've got a Patreon page. There's a link in the comments. I sure could use your help. You'll get to see my videos anywhere from a few days to a few weeks in advance before they go public. Um, like I said, please check it out. My Amazon Marketplace page, please check that out. My name is Paul with Diecast Graveyard. Thank you and cheers.